Hello and welcome back to MBWK. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to design my very popular basket designs. Uh, these are fairly simple to design. Um, for those of you that are beginners, there are a couple of tools in there that are a little bit more advanced, but like all of my videos, I will try my best to take you through step by step and make it as easy as possible for you to follow along. Uh, this project is made up of six components. So first of all, we have our base, which is offset from the bottom. So we have a lip here. Just got a bit of crud I need to get rid of there. Uh, so we've got a lip here that this finger joint rests on. That way it gives us more support if you want to put something heavier in these. If they were just a standard finger joint, um, we're just relying on the glue to hold it in, whereas this has support on the bottom. Then we have the two long sides. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make this slatted version of the basket. Um, each long side is made up of three separate slats. In the bottom slat, it's slightly different to the top two. It incorporates the same finger as uh, the two short sides, just to give that base a little bit more extra strength. And then each slat is then held on with a uh, single finger from the short side. Uh, however, if you don't want to uh, make a slatted box, we can very easily change that to a solid sided box like this one. With this design, we can incorporate a couple of different ideas in there. We can put a divider in the bottom, so we can put four or six beers in there maybe put a bottle opener on the end and we can make this into a beer tote. We could engrave on these panels and these ends, uh, personalize it in some sort of uh, way. This could make it a fantastic gift or a good product for your arsenal. Or like this one, we can cut out a decorative design, which in my opinion, takes these baskets to another level. And if you really want to make a product that you're selling stand out from the rest, I would really encourage to try and do something a little different. This basket design was inspired by a Japanese form of woodworking called Kumiko. Uh, I've actually tried my hand at Kumiko using only hand tools. It's very, very time consuming. It's quite therapeutic. Uh, but the best thing I find about laser engravers is that you can take an ancient art um, because it is an actual art. It takes a lot of time, a lot of preparation. Uh, a lot of things can go wrong uh, when you're doing it by hand. But you can design these patterns in a simple software like Lightburn and incorporate that ancient art into something modern just like this basket. And I've got a load of uh, different Kumiko designs uh, that I'm working on at the moment, and I hope to be incorporating it into different projects for the future. Um, I won't be showcasing how I designed this Kumiko pattern in this video because it will make the video very, very long. Um, but if you would like to know how to make these uh, for yourself, then just leave a comment in the description. And if there's enough interest from enough of you, then I will try my hand at trying to teach how to uh, design these specific things. Now the best thing about these patterns is you don't have to just use it on these baskets You could use it uh, as engravings for slate coasters. You can uh, cut them out of bookmarks The applications for any type of design can be incorporated in any of your projects So yeah, if there is enough interest in it, I'll definitely be up for doing a video on it So let me know and finally, we have the short sides. We incorporate the finger uh, design at the bottom to hold the base to give it more support. Also, we uh, enclose this finger joint for the handle here. The handle can be um, personalized, so we can write uh, thank you, or we can cut out the pattern in here as well. You could even cut a finger pattern out to make it a little bit more ergonomic. I have played about with the handles a bit, and these, this one that I ended up with for this tutorial is actually fairly ergonomic. It feels quite, quite fitting for the hand. Being a carpenter for God knows how many years, um, you get used to, like if you make your own um, handles for chisels and stuff, they have to be ergonomic. They've got to be comfy in the hand, especially if you're wanting to sell these. So 
yeah, uh, a few iterations of this and I've come up with this kind of a sleek handle. Um, but like I said, it is customizable. You can do what you uh, prefer with it. You can tinker with it yourself. Uh, but that's it for the basket, basically. We're going to be learning how to do the slatted version and how to create a blank panel uh, so you can engrave or cut out your own designs. Like I said, we're not going to go through this pattern design in this one, but leave me a comment and we'll talk about that in future. So before we get into the design segment of this video, could I ask you guys to do me a quick favor? That's just to click the like button, subscribe if you haven't done so already. It's the best, easiest and free way you can help support me and my channel. So thank you very much in advance and let's get on with the design work of these baskets. So as you can see on screen, I have three different sized rectangles uh, with the measurements inside. This is just a reference to the overall size of the uh, individual components. The first thing that we're going to tackle is the base. For my project, I'm going to be using this six millimeter MDF. You don't have to use MDF for this project. I've made some solid wood baskets from this design and they come out really, really well. Uh, you can use three millimeter MDF or eighth of an inch if uh, your laser won't cut uh, thicker material. It is a little bit flimsy when it comes to the handle, but you can get around this by doubling up the thickness of this and making that slot a little bit wider on the other side. So whenever I mention uh, the measurement six millimeter uh, in regards to my thickness. If you're going to be using a different thickness material, just replace that uh, six millimeter measurement with the thickness of your material. So first of all, we're going to be tackling the base. The thing that we need to bear in mind is we need to take off the thickness of our material from each side. So I'm gonna be using six millimeter MDF, so I need to take off 12 mil from the width and the length then this measurement will be added on afterwards to make up the overall side once we weld these tabs on. So if we come across to light burn, we're going to go across to the rectangle tool and just draw out a random sized rectangle. Come across to the width. Because I'm using six millimeter MDF, I need to take off 12 mil from the length and the width. So my 230, becomes 218 by 148. So again, if you're using a different size material, just bear that in mind, it's crucial for this project. Now we need to draw our finger joints or our tabs. So again, select the rectangle tool and just draw a random sized rectangle. Where it comes to width, we're going to put in 115. And then the height, we're going to use the thickness of our material. So again, for me, it's going to be six millimeters. Just make sure that the padlock is open. So uh, the aspect ratio is uh, turned off. From there, what we're gonna do is select the center of our small rectangle and bring it up to the uh, large rectangle. And we're gonna place that center to center. So uh, where this cursor becomes a circle with a line through it, that's gonna be center. So we're gonna snap that there. Next, we need to make sure that our small rectangle is selected first. If you hold control and select the large rectangle, but you need to do it in this orientation, we need to go to the Arrange tab at the top of our page. And if you come down this drop-down window, you'll see this copy along path. I'm gonna click on that. And now you'll find that these smaller rectangles have been copied uh, around your uh, large rectangle. If you selected it the other way, so if you selected the large rectangle first and then the uh, smaller rectangle, you would have a large rectangle um, going around your smaller rectangle. Uh, we need to make sure that we select it smallest first. From there, we need to go to this uh, pop-up menu and just select rotate copies so that uh, tab is then green and number of copies we need to make sure that's set to four once you've got that just select ok and as we zoom out we can see that we have our finger joints or tabs um, selected to go around our base from there we're going to select everything 
and just come across to the Weld tool, select that, and we now have created our first component. So next we're going to tackle the short side. As you can see on screen, it says 160 by 230. Now, what we're going to do is split this component in half, and then we're going to mirror it so uh, we get a perfectly symmetrical um, side. So because we're going to be designing this as half, uh, what we're going to need to do is take that 160, which is the width that you see on the uh, screen, we go and uh, divide that by two, so that gives us 80, but we also need to take the width of our finger off, so the thickness of our material, so in my case that's six mil. So off of that 80, because it's half of the 160, I need to subtract the thickness from 80, so that will be 74 millimeters. Uh, if we come across to the rectangle tool and just draw out a random rectangle again, go across to the width and type in 74. Uh, the height is going to stay the same at 230. Uh, just hit enter. So we now have half of our short side. From there, we need to take a uh, circle or ellipse tool, hold the shift and control key down. Make sure that the padlock is closed to keep the aspect ratio the same. Uh, select one of the width or height and make that 36 millimeters and hit enter. Select the top of the circle where we have this crosshair, so we're, we're selecting the center of the top of the circle. We're going to drag and drop that on the top right hand corner. So this is going to be the center of the handle here. Uh, and from there, we're going to select uh, T1, which is a toolpath. So if you leave this circle uh, in your design and you forget to deselect that circle, it won't cut it out. Um, the worst it'll do is just frame it. Uh, from there, we need to select this rectangle and right click to convert it to path because we are going to use the node editing tool. And if you weren't aware, you can't use the node editing tool on normal, uh, regular shapes. Uh, so you have to convert them into a path first. From there, what we're going to do is draw another rectangle from the bottom left hand corner. Uh, just drag that up. And where it says height, we just want to type in 90 millimeters. Uh, make sure it's selected and drag that up to the bottom left hand corner. And this is just going to be a reference to where we're going to be adding a node. So the next step is coming across to the node edit tool on the left hand side. Select that and make sure you have the large rectangle selected. If you zoom in where these two lines intersect uh, we get a crosshair, and all we're going to do is press I on the keyboard, and that's going to insert a node. So we ha now have this square on screen. Uh, from there, we are going to go to this top right-hand corner, and if you hover over the node itself and press S on the keyboard, that's going to make that node a smooth node. And now you can see that this node has changed from a square to a circle. And now you have these handles, which is going to aid in giving us a, which is going to aid us in giving us a smooth um, transition. So this handle, I am going to bring down to roughly where the edge of this circle is, just going to drag that down uh, to about 20, 30 millimeters below the circle. And then I'm going to drag the top out. And all we're trying to do is follow the radius of this circle, just to give us a nice 
sweeping effect. And you can play about with this however you want. You can make some very abstract shapes out of this. Um, I'm sure if it's your first time using the node edit tool, um, you may find it a little bit tricky to begin with. Um, but you can have some fun with it as well. Uh, so the next step is I've just taken this handle from the uh, node that we placed earlier. I'm just extending that up to uh, give us this kind of rounded shoulder to our basket. And again, you can make this as um, tall or as shallow, so you can make it inverted as well. So you can really bring that uh, handle nice and slim. Uh, but I like to uh, keep this with a nice sweeping shoulder. In my personal opinion is it's more aesthetically pleasing. Uh, but again, you can literally have as much fun as you want with this. You could, you could bring this uh, node edit uh, node right in and then change these handles to bring that back to the round and then you'll get a very narrow um, shoulder when it comes to the inside corners here. So just play about with it until you find something that you're happy with. I'm just going to bring that back to roughly what I had before. I'm happy with that. So now that you have your half shape made, we're just going to take this rectangular box at the bottom and get rid of that. We want to keep this circle at the top because we need to add a finger joint to it. But from here, we're going to select the shape that we just made, hold control and press D on the keyboard, and that'll make a duplicate copy of it. And then we're gonna go up here to the mirror tool and as you can see, that duplicate is now a mirror image of what we've just created. So if you now take the select tool and hover over the very top point, we can click and drag and move that to the exact same point on the opposite side. And what that's gonna do is give us our overall shape. Now we just wanna drag and uh, select both of those without the circle and we're going to click on the weld tool and now we have this overall shape without the uh, finger joints or the finger tabs on them. Uh, so what we're going to do now is just uh, select the circle and the shape that we've just made and we're just going to group those together. Now like I said uh, in the intro, we're going to put this tab in um, so we've got more support, so we're not going to make a finger joint like a traditional box. Um, we're going to have it offset so it's uh, not sitting completely flat. We're going to have a shoulder on the bottom. To do that, we're going to go to the rectangle tool and just select from the bottom left hand corner and drag it to the right side. It should be 148, it is. And this is a good point where you can check your dimensions as well. Because I'm using six millimeter thick MDF, my overall measurement at this point needs to be 148. If you're using a different size material, then it will be different, but it should be the same as your base. With this rectangle that we've just drawn, uh, we need to make the height of it six mil. Uh, if you're using a different thickness material, just keep this specific uh, measurement at six, um, because if you only have a three mil lip, it will probably be very, very fragile and break. So I'm just going to select in the circles here, I'm just going to click the bottom left corner. And that means that when I adjust this measurement, uh, it's only gonna change uh, the height of it from that point. So where the height is, I'm going to type in six millimeters. Make sure that the padlock is unlocked again and hit enter. Uh, okay, so from there, uh, because our fingers that we made on our base was 115 millimeters by six, we also need to do the same here. So we're just gonna draw another rectangle and make that 115 by six millimeters or the thickness of your material. 
I'm just going to change that to a green layer because I like to have my uh, inner and outer cuts on different layers. From there, we're just gonna take this rectangle, go to the center like we did before, click and hold, and we're going to drag that to the center of the box that we made that was six millimeters giving us that lip. We're going to release that and that is where this slot is positioned. Now we just need to select both of these and group these together. There's one last thing that we need to do with this before we put this to one side. Uh, we're not going to be putting the finger joints on at the moment until we've made the long sides or the slats up. Uh, but we do need to make a slot for our handle. So again, we're just going to draw out a random sized handle. Uh, for the width this time, I'm going to make it 6mm. You will need to make it the same thickness as the material that you're using. For the height, I am going to make this 30 millimeters and press enter. Go to the select tool and we're just going to drag this to the center of that circle. That's why we left that circle there to begin with. Uh, that was all that it was used for. So we can group all of this together now and we are just going to set this aside just for the time being until we get our long sides uh, designed. So for the long sides, um, we don't have any finger joints to allow for, but I have extended the sides over, so the slats overhang, so we do need to allow for that. And you can make this measurement whatever you want, but for me, I am just gonna leave it at quarter of an inch or six mil, uh, as usual. So for these longer sides, we need to go to the rectangle tool again and draw out a random size rectangle. And for this, we are going to make the width 230 and the height 90. The reason why it's 90 is because when we designed uh, this shape here, we left 90 mil and this is where we placed our node. Uh, so we have a depth of 90 mil for our panel, at least the contact points for the panel. So we've got a rectangle at 230 by 90. I'm just going to change this to a toolpath because we're not actually using this as a side, it is just a reference. So next what we're going to do is draw these slats. Uh, for these we are going to add twice the thickness of our material. Uh, so for me it's going to be 230 plus 12, so I've got 242. Um, by 25 mil. You can make these as thick or as thin as what you want as well. But for my tutorial, it's gonna be 25 mil. So we need to go to the rectangle, draw a ra random size rectangle first. I'm gonna make mine 242 by 25 uh, and hit enter. So now we just need to select this rectangle and uh, by clicking and dragging it from the center, we're just going to place it center of our larger rectangle. The next thing that we need to do is make the slots for our fingers. So to do that, we're going to go across to the rectangle tool, draw a random size again. Again, I'm just going to change my layer to green because it's an inside cut, not an outside. I like to do this ahead of time and hopefully it'll give you a better um, representation of what's going on. For the width, I'm going to make mine six. You need to make this whatever material thickness you're using. And my height, I am going to make 15 millimeters. Uh, hit enter, make sure it's selected. And we're going to select it from the left hand center of the slot and we're going to bring that center of the large rectangle not the slat because this bit here next to the finger is going to be what's overhanging the edge of our basket once we've done that we're going to make a copy of it by selecting it and holding control and pressing d and then we're going to bring this across to the other edge of our slat and we're going to do the same thing 
click and drag it from the right hand side of our slot and we're going to snap it to the center of the larger rectangle and we're just going to deselect that and that is going to be the finger joints for our first slat. What we can do is click on this radius tool and we can radius these corners. I think I did this three or four mil. Uh, so where it says radius and you have the dimension underneath it, we're just going to make this three, four, five, five millimeters. Just don't make it six or more because that radius will then creep into the side of the box and aesthetically it doesn't look as good. Uh, so I'm gonna go for four millimeters and I'm just gonna click on every uh, corner of our slat. And all it's gonna do is just round over uh, each one of those corners. Uh, once we've done that, we are going to uh, just select those three bits, so the two, two slots we've just created and the slat itself, and group them together. So you can press and hold control and press G, or you can go up to the top and group them up there. From there, we're going to make a duplicate of it. Uh, so hold control and press D. Um, find the center of the slat at the top and we're going to pull that up to the center of the large rectangle. And then we are going to hold control and press D again. So we've made another copy and we're going to bring that down to the very bottom. Exactly the same, find the center of the slat and snap it to the center of the larger rectangle. Now we have all three slats. The only thing that we have left to do uh, when it comes to uh, the longer sides is we need to put a slot in for the base to fit into. So that's this one here. So again, what we need to do is go to the rectangle tool, draw out a random sized rectangle, go to the width, you need to put in the measurement 115. And for the height, I need to put six. Uh, if you hit enter, go to the select tool and bring that to the center of the bottom of the slat. Found it. And then what we're going to do is hold control and press D and we're going to snap that to the top of the box that we created before. And we're just going to delete the one that we snapped to the bottom because this gives us the gap underneath that I've got left here. Uh, that, that was just a reference, the uh, box beforehand. So once you've got that, all we're going to do is select the long slot, the two small slots and the slat itself and group those together. And there we have our slat components. Now leave these as they are because we need to leave these as uh, a reference for our finger tabs to go on the sides of these. When it comes to cutting your components out of your material and you don't want to waste as much material, you can nest these together so they're tighter. But for now, for the design work, just leave them as they are. In fact, we're going to group all of that together. <clears throat> right, sorry about that. Uh, just had to go and get the dog because he was being annoying downstairs. You're gonna settle? Yeah, you're gonna be a part of the video. Right, okay, so if you want to make a uh, solid panel basket uh, like this one, it's very, very easy to do now because we've already got the slats already made. So if we go across the rectangle tool and just draw out a random size rectangle, if we select our slats that we uh, grouped together earlier, you can see that the overall width and height of our three slats uh, combined uh, amount to 242 by 90. So that's the measurement that we're going to use for our rectangle. So 242 by 90, just press enter. And if you drag it from the center and snap it to the center of the middle slat, you'll see that it is the exact size of all of these slats combined. So from there, we're going to select our slats that we grouped, 
hold control and press D to duplicate that. I'm just gonna bring that down or to one side. Uh, that is our slat if you wanted to make a slatted one. With the slats that are left behind, we just want to ungroup all of those and we're just going to get rid of the slats themselves. So the red lines that are on my screen have now disappeared. And also the uh, T1 toolpath uh, rectangle that we made at the very beginning, we're going to delete that as well. And now we are left with a blank panel uh, with all of the finger joints left over from the slats. So these slats here, they are left in place and we now have a blank panel. So we can go to the radius uh, tool again, click on the exterior rectangle and we can just put a radius on those four corners. Again, just to knock the corners off so they're not sharp. Uh, you can put a larger radius on if you want. But again, like I said, if you go too far, it's gonna encroach on the side and it's not gonna be aesthetically pleasing and I'm just going to make that red because it's an outside uh, layer. And then we're just gonna select all of this and group it. So if you just want a square uh, or a rectangular straight panel, you can leave it at, as that, <laughs> okay? No, 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 stay there. You can leave it as that. If you want a radius one, so if you want a curve to it, like this one, that's very simple to do. You'll have to deselect um, everything. To select that side, we need to come across to the node editing tool. And if you hover over this little square where the radius has been put on, we just need to take out these uh, nodes here. So we're just gonna hover over the top of that square and press D. And we're gonna do that on the other side as well. And we're gonna to go to the center of this rectangle and we're just going to pull that up. And you can make this as high or as low as, as you, what you want. You could even make this a concave side, but I like my concave, which, whichever one it is. So there you have a different style of side. So again, we can just bring this out of the way. So now that we have these slots, okay. So what we need to do is bring these uh, slats down so the bottom of the slat lines up with the bottom of the short side. And what this is going to do is just give us a reference to where we're going to extend our fingers uh, on the short side so we can make the fingers to join up with these slots. So all we're going to do is go to the rectangle tool and we're going to make a rectangle the same size as our slot. From there, we just need to line the edge of our um, rectangle that we just made with the edge of our uh, short side. And then we're just gonna duplicate that. Bring it down to the other uh, slot and we're gonna do the same thing. Bring it across to the side. And then same again, we're gonna press Control and D, make a copy of it. We're gonna bring it down to the bottom slot and just bring that across to the side of our short side. From there, we are going to hold control and select the three tabs we've just made. Uh, hold control and press D. And we're going to make a copy and we're going to bring that across to the opposite side. Okay, so they're all lined up. Now we can highlight the slats, move those to one side because they are now done with. And then we're going to group these tabs together. So now that we have our tabs uh, grouped together, just going to click on our side panel and notice that everything is grouped together. I'm just going to uh, deselect everything. Go to the tabs and select those. See that all of the tabs are selected. 
hold control and select the uh, exterior shape. If any of your components are uh, selected inside, when you click the weld tool they may, may disappear. So just select weld and now we have the outline of our uh, short side. So that's now our uh, short side component complete as well. So the only thing that we have left to do is uh, design and make the handle. Before we do anything else, I'm just going to group all of this together and leave that to one side. Actually, I'm just going to bring this uh, into our uh, grid for a second because for the handle, I'm going to need this as a reference. So the handle on the box goes from the inside to inside, but it, overall the handle is uh, the overall dimension of the box because the uh, finger joint is flush with the outside. So all I'm going to do is take a rectangle from the inside points of the base, and that's gonna give me my internal width, which is 218 millimeters. Just going to drag this onto our grid. So 218 millimeters is the inside width of our handle. I want to make the handle thickness the same height as our circle that we had to begin with, which was 36 millimeters. So whilst that rectangle is selected, just going to change that to 36 mil. Hit enter. And from there, I am going to line up the center of the rectangle that we just made to the center of the uh, slot that we're gonna cut out of the short side. Next, we need to just copy this rectangle of the slot, uh, select that and the handle, and we're just going to move this to one side. And then we're going to select the small rectangle again, hold control and press D, that's gonna duplicate it bring that to the opposite side of the handle, uh, find the center of the small rectangle, and we're gonna snap that to the center of our long handle. Next, we need to take all of uh, these three components and weld those together. And to make the shape of the handle, I think I made it about 20, 25 mil uh, thick in the middle. Uh, all we have to do is make sure that our component is selected. Go to the node edit tool again, find the center, which is just here. I'm going to drag that up to 10, 20 mil up. And then with the bottom, doing exactly the same thing, just following that center line. And there we have a 20 mil uh, thin handle in the middle and it slowly tapers to get thicker which is going to give us a bit more strength when it comes to the contact points on the short side and that should be all the design work that's needed we need to duplicate the uh, short side so we now have two short sides we can bring that to the side we have our base which we only need one of we have our handle, which you can play about with to make it as ergonomic as you want for your own project. We have a set of slats, which we need to duplicate. So we have both of our long sides now. Or if you don't want to use slats, we have our solid side that again, we can duplicate and make two of. So there we have our slats, our handle, our base, the two short sides, and all of the joinery uh, which is needed to make these baskets. So there's one last thing that we need to do before we wrap this video up, and that's we need to make one of these uh, tabs. It's gonna be similar to this. It's actually gonna be a hole uh, rather than a notch. Uh, like a traditional finger joint uh, so we can see what our offset we need to plug into Lightburn to give us the best fit possible. Uh, so all we need to do for that is we need to draw a rectangle uh, 
make it sort of 30, 40 mil and do it square. So 40 by 40. Uh, within that, we need to draw another rectangle, which will be the thickness of your material. So mine will be six. Uh, and we can make the width of that 20. And we are going to make the inside layer green and the outside layer red. So we already have that. We need to click on the small rectangle with the slot in the middle and make a duplicate of that. Just bring this down. And then all we need to do is make a rectangle that is wider than that rectangle. So we can make this 40 by 12. And we're just going to line the centers of both of these together. Select both of them and select the Well tool. And now we've generated a tab. We need to make this a red layer. So to get the perfect fit, you need to cut both of these out at the same time and do this as many times as necessary until you get the best fit. So if we go up to uh, our layer tab in the top right window and double click on that, you can see in here where it says curve offset, I've got 0 0.03. What that means is it's going to take 0 0.03 millimeters off of this edge and this edge to make the slot uh, narrower. And if we take a look at the outside line, the, the red line, the red cut layer, we can see that my curve offset is set to 0 0.09. Uh, and that means that if I use my uh, Autor Laser Master 2 Pro, if I use these curve settings, I know that I'm going to get really nice fitting joints when it comes to assembly. If you leave them as they are, they'll be extremely sloppy. Like they, they, they will literally just slot together and fall back out. So before you cut out all of your um, components, just make sure that you have your kerf dialed in with this simple test and uh, that will save you a lot of wasted time and materials uh, because you know that if, they, if these fit as they should, then all of your slots and components are going to marry up perfectly. Let me know how you get on um, and any feedback that you give in the comment section I will make sure to look into it and see if there's any way that I can improve. So thank you very much for your time and hopefully I shall see you in the next video.